Hello everybody, welcome! My name is Ursa Ryan and it's 2024, which means I have been meaning for some time to put another guide together for you all. Yes, how to beat Deity. Now I can hear you all. Civ 6 has been around for ages and ages and ages. Everybody knows how to beat Deity, right? We've all been playing the game for years. Well, you might think that, but last year I did a Tokugawa series, which was a similar guide, how to beat Deity using Tokugawa, and it went down incredibly well. People found it really useful, and I've been meaning to put another one together since then because, unbelievably, Civ 6 keeps growing and there's a whole new audience available now, people that have picked it up in one of the recent anthologies or discounts or various deals that have been going around the market. Welcome all, Civ 6, it's a brilliant game, you will lose your life to it. <laughs> Run now. So this guide a little bit is the first time deity beaters, however, the other aim of this guide is for me to explain in detail every decision making process that I go through and by doing that, I hope to shed a little bit of guidance for anybody else watching that may maybe already knows how to play Deity. There's a lot of you out there. There's a lot of you out there watching this video that are probably better at single player than I am. Congrats if you're you. Well done. I can show you something new at some point in this series. So, why Ludwig? Why Germany? I think Ludwig is one of the most popular leaders in Civ 6 right now, especially because a lot of the people have now got the new leader pass and the frontier pack that you need for him. Or is it just the leader pass? It might just be the leader pass you need for Ludwig. But, Swan King, this magnificent weapon, beautiful jack kids? What would you call this? It's got such amazing, what looks like brass shoulder pads? Whatever this all is, it's wonderful. Ludwig is a very popular leader and constantly rates as one of the most played leaders in the community. There is a third category of person watching this video as well. People who don't play Civ at all and who are just here because they like the sound of my voice and it helps you to fall asleep. Haha! <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a good series for you because we're going to be talking lots and lots. So overall, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, remember, a cup of tea makes this series go down down even better than before. A smile on your face. Coming over to Discord helps as well because not only are you going to see all of the different user interface mods that I use when filming, and hint, there's quite a few of them, you can also play along with this exact game. Have a go yourself. Can you follow what I'm doing? Can you replicate what I'm doing? If you've never beaten Deity before, this is your chance. Now here's how this series is going to go. Information is going to be front loaded towards the beginning of the series. It's going to be a multi-part series and over the course of the series I will win the game, hopefully. But by front loading the information I mean there's going to be a lot of me talking through strategy at the beginning and it'll become more of a let's play as we go closer to the end so stick in there there'll be gameplay for you to follow along with. I aim to basically show you every single decision that I make that's of use and in some way I can teach you about but not everything will get shown some stuff will get skipped just because otherwise the video might be 20 hours long. It just helps the flow of the series really. I should also mention as well this is a single player guide I know multiplayer it's a whole other beast it's a hydra that will rip you apart with players that know how to defeat you and spite you and hate you and remember that time that you nuked them three games ago and haven't forgiven you. That's what multiplayer is. Specifically a lot of the different things we're going to talk about in terms of deity relationships, trading for gold, trading for diplo favor, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work in multiplayer. This is very much a single player guide, my specialty is single player, there are some amazing multiplayer people out there, I'm sure they'll be able to help you with lots of stuff. But what sort of map are we playing? Continents, it is the standard. It is the default map choice of Civilization 6 if you press the just play here button because I don't like choice and I just want a game to be given to me. Continence is what gets given to you. It's an 8 player game, no game mode, standard speed, deity, no gameplay changing mods, balanced start position with these details if you want to, you know, input this into your fax machine manually and play along. Do people still do that? I guess people still do that. You don't know, dear viewer, do you? You're on Discord, you can get the save file. I'm going to focus today on gold and production is the two major things. Not science, not culture, not faith, gold and production. And the reason for that is because this guide is going to basically help you with deity science, culture and diplomatic victories. I'm not going to be teaching you how to do a domination victory today. Warfare is very different, it's very aggressive and I want my guide to be more inclined to peaceful play today. It's not going to be 100% peaceful. I will defend myself and if the AI gives me any grievances I can use, I will return them in kind. But we're going to aim to be pretty grievance neutral where we can. Really Religious victory is also another beast. I'm not going to be doing that today, but we will be trying to get a religion. That is something I will want to do. I aim to get to about turn 125 before we really decide what victory we're going to go for. Maybe even turn 150. My aim is to show you how to build up a really high production gold base that is very flexible and works on a lot of different types of maps. That's the idea anyway.
anyway. Some other little pointers, apart from Swan King, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I'm not going to be aiming for a particular religion or pantheon that is difficult to get. This is going to be a flexible strategy that should be replicable on a lot of different types of maps with a lot of different opponents as long as they're AI. Not against people, they're unruly and unpredictable. Don't play with them. Friends? Haha! <laughs> Who needs them when you can play with the AI? Yes. It's dystopian, but it's lovely. Wonders is going to be another thing as well. I'm not going to be rushing Wonders. For instance, I mean, look at this particular start. Etamananki, anybody? Wouldn't that be great? I know it would be great, but it's not a replicable strategy across a lot of different series. So I'm going to be going for not Wonderless, but until we get engineers that give us Wonders and until we get to sort of the medieval, if not industrial eras and our production is overflowing and there are some Wonders left that are very cheap, that's when I'll start to build them. Again, excluding Swan King, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. If you're the sort of person that is very good at deity and you can see something that is a good strategy that you'd like to add to or something you feel I didn't expand on properly, let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to revisit it and I do read pretty much all of them. So thank you very much. Let's get going. Turn one. And the reason I really wanted to show you this particular start is because it's a bit challenging. There is no production on this start whatsoever. It is all grassland. Good for food, but not very good for production. There's a lot of three food, zero production tiles. There's a huge amount of floodplain, but we may come a cropper if we don't find some production soon. Now, any tile I settle on in my city center will gain two food and one production. It is the minimum value that a tile can give you for a city center. Any feature, such as a marsh, a rainforest, or a wood that I settle on, will disappear when I settle on it. However, resources like rice, chocolate, stone, they stay underneath the city center and they can increase the yields above 2-1 if it would increase it above 2-1. I think, for instance, if I was to settle on top of this rice, my city center would have three food and one production. However, if I was to settle there, I would have no production tiles around me and only a three food tile to work. My citizens would be so full of rice, we would weigh about 18 stone each, but we wouldn't be able to get anything done. We can't be having that. Well, what other options have we got? There is a stone over here and some rainforest, but rainforest is very difficult to work and quarries are pretty useless. There's a little bit of rainforest hills. On these two tiles, there is a stone on a hill, so there's lots of production over on this side, as well as some olives. I can't get to any of it very quickly. Potentially, I could cross the river and then work this olives from turn one for a tiny bit of extra gold and then I'd be in range of a second tile taking of this particular tile that one so there is some production on the horizon or I could go towards this chocolate above me here first thing I'm going to do is send my warrior over to kind of go and investigate over and see if we can find anything else marble all right production's pretty limited it's a good balance I mean ultimately later in the game we will be building houses we'll talk about those in a little bit and they work really well with lots of floodplain and lots of water around but the choice really is whether or not I cross over and settle on this tile I think to work the olives on turn two and then have all of these tiles with some production or if I go towards the chocolate and then settle on top of it that would give me the luxury from turn one which is very very useful it would also have a potential fidget spinner now it's very early in the game to get too excited about this but a fidget spinner is when you can take three cities and put them in a little bit of a triangle like this you can do it with any civilization apart from Gaul. Actually, no, you can do it with Gaul. And when you get a triangle with some water in between, you aqueduct into the middle like this, everyone into sort of a central point. Your industrial zones go in a big circle like this. And actually on this tile, I think, I, can I even put a dam in the middle there? Does that work? It does. <laughs> It's almost too tempting. I mean, look, wait, we can't get too excited because there's all kinds of things that could ruin that formation, but that is making me want to necessarily go and investigate the chocolate over there. I love settling on luxuries. It makes the city center better. In this particular case, it would put three gold underneath my city center, which would mean instead of getting five gold per turn, which all comes from the palace, this goes into your capital automatically, five gold per turn, I would actually get eight gold per turn. That's 60% bonus gold. Oh, it's really good. I'm, I'm going to just risk it. I mean, yeah, as I say, uh, the, the other place to go would be on this tile there, but I don't think the reward is really worth it. And you know, we're going to just, we're just going to gamble. I like to remind people, you don't have to settle on turn one or turn two. You could settle on anything up to about turn five or six. As long as you don't get killed by barbarians, it's often worth having a much better starting location and making sure you get something really good. That's the coast, interestingly. And there's planes over here. Planes have one food and one production rather than two 
2 production. By the way, you'll hear me saying quite a lot, things like 2-1-1 or 2-2. Two, two. It's a, a shorthand of describing what the yield of a tile is, and literally you read it left to right. So if I say 2-2, two, two, for instance, normally it means 2 food, 2 production. Or this one would be a 3, which is 3 food, a 2-1. You're looking for yields of 4 or more. That Those are the best tiles to settle next to. And there's also, look at that, a 2-2 two, two tile on the second ring, as well as having some marble over here. This is a very high luxury start. I don't mind settling on it. I think this is worth a risk. Now, I say the risk, this river could flood at any time. If it flooded, with my settler stood on it, I would be immediately defeated, and this guide would end on turn two, and that would be very sad. But we're not going to do that, because if that happened, I wouldn't have put this video up, would I? <laughs> Maybe, actually, no, it probably would have been made into a short. Look at all this. Actually, there's decent land the other side. This gamble actually paid off fairly decently, and this is the other settlement. I'm going to just move my warrior around in a big circle. Oh, is that fresh water? No, that's coastal water. I was thinking, actually, I might be able to settle over here. Some more chocolates, some more olives. Very high luxury start. This is not bad at all. We're going to settle on turn three. I think overall, I'm very happy with that. Munich. Hello. Lovely to meet you, city. Now, you can see we have very little production around me right now, but we will get production in a little bit. Once we start working things like this stone tile, this rainforest tile, this will each bring two production per tile in. So don't worry about that too much for now. We are instead focusing on food. Because we have such low production, I would go for the cheapest thing a city can build, which is a scout. Now, normally, I would actually say it is worth getting a warrior over a scout. I know. I know the meta in Civ 6 is very much to go for scouts, and there's good reason for that. Scouts are by far the cheapest unit at only 30 production that a city can build from the beginning of the game. And with three movement, they are fantastic at literally scouting around the map. Why would you want to scout around the map? Well, you'll find city states, you'll find tribal villages, you'll find barb camps. The more information you have, the more information you're equipped with. Where are your opponents? Where are the barbs? Where are the best settlement locations? Where are the city stays? There's a lot of good stuff, but the problem I find with scouts is this, 10 melee strength. It is incredibly weak. Scouts get killed very quickly. I prefer warriors. Yes, they're a little bit slow. They're a little bit more expensive, so one less movement point and 10 more production. They have 10 more melee strength, which means that they actually can fight barbarians and survive a lot longer. They upgrade really usefully into a swordsman, which is an actual combat unit and that goes all the way through to mana arms so it's on a tree yeah, what we call the melee tree of the unit which is very useful but the promotions are also really good for combat battle cry gives this unit seven melee strength against most early game opponents that's awesome so i'm very tempted normally to go for warrior and i would be if i had more production but this particular start is very low on production i'm not going to be really worried about that too much now in terms of tactics i mentioned before that i have a pantheon and a religion choice for you that i would recommend you go with on anybody that you want to benefit from a religion from, but you don't want to spend all of your game building holy sites and really focusing on faith and religion. You don't need much faith to pull this off, you don't need many holy sites to pull this off at all. It's also that wonderful thing, very uncompetitively sought by the AI. The AI will never go for this pantheon or religion, we'll talk about it when we get it, but I do want a religion fairly quickly in order to benefit from it and also to try and get at least a normal age. So we're going to go astrology, hopefully we'll find a natural wonder, one thing you can do is just pop on to appeal lens which is just three on the keyboard i'm going to try and teach you the shortcut keys as well because it's actually quite useful to use your keyboard sorry console users i know i know you're all buttons and i respect you f in the comments for console users you've dealt with a lot of different patches and i think you're very strong well done but if you are using a keyboard it's quite simple one to get the religion lens it just basically goes down the list two for continent three for appeal four for satellite five for government the most useful ones at the beginning of the game appeal with number three because this tells you where natural wonders are. Natural wonders give a huge amount of appeal to surrounding tiles. So if you see random segments of incredibly high appeal, could be a natural wonder. The settler lens, because the red, when it's not on a mountain, because mountains can never be settled, because they're massive and tall and, I mean, unless you're Swiss, you're not going to live on a mountain. Or the Incans, I guess they can't live on mountains, which is ironic. Anyway, the mountains are always red. But if you see other bits of red, you know there's a city there. Normally, beginning of the game, city-states, but it could be the AI. AI is bad. Ooh. Also keep an eye out for two, which is continent. That is uh, just shows you where other continents are. Luxury distribution around the map is all based on continents. So finding a continent split and a second continent you can settle on will normally get you a load more luxuries than you would normally get. Those are the main ones for now. Just keep an eye on that information. You, you getting enough information yet? I warned you, this is going to be a very, very talky series. Ultimate guide. I intend on making it brilliant. What I 
I'm going to do actually is use my warrior. I want to keep it relatively close to my capital just in case barbarians appear. But I'm going to start to sort of circle around. I want to know what in the immediate area is here. And it's always a good idea to follow fresh water. Like this river, for instance, is something I would likely want to settle up. Although annoyingly, if I press four for settler lens, you can see the river actually runs out just as I get past the minimum settling distance. So kind of maybe not the best settlement location if I did want to go and settle into the north. Don't worry, fresh water can be dealt with later by the addition of granaries. These are really, really good buildings when you have low housing because that gives you two housing and later aqueducts, which do two things. Aqueducts increase your housing from water to six. So it gives you the biggest bonus if you have no fresh water because you're on the coast or because you are just waterless. And the aqueduct also gives a major adjacency to your industrial zones, as you can see right here. Again, computer users, what you can do is actually use this uh, search lens at the bottom. Have a look at the hills. Now, hills are really, really useful because hills, if you stand on top of them, you can see over things. You can see, I can't see through this forest right now. This is totally hidden from me. But if I stand on top of the hill, da-da, now I can see everywhere. It's very, very good to just scout a lot of the map very, very quickly. You can see, look, these are all hills as well. So I can now go and stretch out to these. Beautiful. Just a little, little sneaky thing for you there. A desert to this direction. Now you want diverse biomes and diverse types of terrain around you. Desert generally is pretty useless. It gives no yields and it's very difficult to improve with builders. So generally you want to stay away from it, but it's good to know where it is. That is somebody. And you can tell again by pressing four for Sattler lands. Look at this. This is too close to city. So this would have given this away. But it looks like there's somebody right by me with red and yellow. This could be Spain. This could be Saivir. Those are my two first guesses. We'll see which one this turns out to be. It is Spain. I love Spain. European neighbor. When you meet somebody, you get an error score. That's really good. So that's one of the reasons why scouting around and revealing the map is really handy. You want to get that error score. But it also gives you this option. First one, an honor to meet you. You always want to be nice at first. I and mean, then you want to look very carefully at the second option. We would love to sample your hospitality. This screen is a little bit like going to a restaurant with that person you have to go and see, but you don't really want to go and see. If they offer to pay the bill for you, excellent. If they're saying, oh, you can treat me to dinner. Oh no, suddenly you're busy. This is literally that. Would you like to come and see a bullfight? If you're paying Spain, if you're paying, what this does is it shows me their city, it shows me where they're settled. If I offer, would you like to come and see our city? They will know exactly where my capital is. And they start with six warriors. Dirty AI is incredibly tough. We don't want to show where our city is for as long as we can get away with it. So never accept that. But you know, it's good. It keeps friendly meeting, friendly terms on the meeting. And I can already, like already actually see, do you like chocolate? Oh, he does like chocolate. 80 gold. No, I'm going to keep that for now. You can get a lot more gold out of the AI. Normally you can get about seven to eight gold per turn for a luxury. So until they play ball, they're not going to get it. Now, I never normally bother with a delegation, uh, at least early game. Later on, you have a lot more that you can use to influence relations with the AI. Things like open borders, bribing them with large gifts. All of these things are very, very helpful. Delegations give plus three. I start with a malice of minus five. That's just the deity penalty for meeting people. So even if I gave them a delegation, it would only take me to minus two. And that means I would lose 25 gold for no reason. So if you see this as minus three or better, it's worth sending a delegation. If it isn't, it's probably not worth it. Now, do you see, I grabbed this stone tile. Excellent. That means we've now got a little bit of production coming in to my city. In fact, I could use my gold to buy some more production now from this tile. I wouldn't normally do this. I'm going to say I wouldn't normally do this quite a lot this game. It's just one of those things. But rather than just pointlessly growing the city out, I'd like to actually build things. And this will take me from five production to seven, which is a huge increase, absolutely huge increase of 40% production. So there we go. Now we're really producing things and we can look to get our first settler out, which would be very handy indeed. It's worth noting that Spain is quite an aggressive neighbor and they really don't like you if you have your own religion. Oh, they, you see, look, the scout has already found me. So me not inviting them to my city is, it didn't really work out in this particular case, but sometimes you can delay the AI from finding you for about three or four turns. And that can often be a big difference, very big difference. My scout is going to follow the river now along this floodplain. It's nice and flat. We're going to go and see what we can find in the other direction. If I have a look at some of my settler spots, you can see there are olives here, but I would need irrigation to work those. I need mining for marble. This settlement spot has no luxuries around it. So really, I want to find a settler spot that does have luxuries, something with some 
sort of water and some sort of luxury. If I can get luxuries, then I can power up my cities. I can sell them. Like already you can see, look, four gold and one. One gold has been added to this trade. Oh, Spain really wants chocolate now. He's starting to think, oh, maybe, maybe that deal. Maybe it was better than I thought it was. We'll see. We'll see how we go. But ultimately I do want to find another very good settling location. This is, it would be good, but it has no fresh water whatsoever. And this one has almost no production. So maybe a settlement over in this location might be good. I'm going to get my warrior to check that out now. But Spain already knows where I am. They don't like me and they have 132 military strength. Military strength, by the way, to calculate this, you just add up all of the melee strength of all of your units. So warrior is 20 strength and it's on full health, which means I get 100% of that towards my score. So my score is 20. It's that simple. So Spain probably has, I'm guessing, seven warriors, which would be 140 and maybe one or two of them are damaged a little bit. That's normally what happens. They could warrior rush me. It could be very painful. So rather than jumping on a settler immediately, I'm going to let my city grow up just a little bit more. This tile would be improved by a mine. This tile would be improved by a quarry. Both of these are, are very easily done. I'm going to get a builder first. I was thinking about rushing a warrior, but until I get a gogi, this card, which gives me 50% production towards warriors, I'm not going to waste my production on that right now. I mean, admittedly, it also has 30% production towards builders. So I'm kind of wasting my production, but I feel spending production would get me production here. Does that make sense? Feels like it makes sense. Yeah, Spain has already denounced me. That is within two turns of meeting me and already they're building a wonder. This is one of the reasons why I'm not getting so fussed on wonders this game. Deity AI is mental. They get huge bonuses. You often think, is the deity AI cheating? It feels like they're cheating. Yes, they absolutely cheat. They start with three cities rather than one, hence why Spain is on three cities in turn 13. Well, it doesn't start with three. It's weird. They start with one settler, but as soon as they settle the third city, another settler immediately appears and it chains until the third one goes down. But they get huge bonuses to production, to science, to culture. They're going to discover the wonders before you and they're going to build them faster, especially early game. So you can go for early game wonders, but it often takes a lot of strategy, like specific starts with, say, Magnus, getting you 50% yield from harvests and removals and stuff like that. We want to keep off the strategy nice and flexible. You know, we want to just see how we go. Go and check out this settlement location a little bit more. A tribal village. I am amazed we haven't found more of these tribal villages, but I'm glad we have found one. Oh, that river just flooded. This is the good thing and bad thing about floodplains. It will flood repeatedly. This will damage districts. It will kill population. It will remove improvements. It could even hit and injure units, although we've got away with this. But what it has done is actually left permanent tile increases. So this grassland is actually now worth three food. Very handy. Let's go and see what this tribal village is all about. 40 gold. That's okay. I would have preferred a three builder, a three scout, extra population. There's a lot of fun stuff that could have triggered, but what you're going to do? And most importantly, a barbarian outpost has appeared right by Munich. I don't like that. I'm actually going to get my warrior to reveal that for me, which actually means there is a decent plot of land. I mean, this is desert here, but there's amber, two bananas that I could work immediately. Loyalty could be a problem in this area. That is the only problem, but maybe we could go and settle in that direction. I don't know. But I'm going to bring my warrior back now and see if we can just stand firm against the barbs. I'm also going to move off astrology now. If I find a natural wonder, I will gain 40% of the tech cost of that tech instantly. And that will give me that wonder for three or the tech for three. So I want to move off it now. One of the first ones you want to go for is animal husbandry. Now horses appear with animal husbandry. They can only spawn on grassland or plains. So not grassland or plains hills like this tile and not on flood plain. But like for instance, this tile, this tile, they could appear anywhere. And if horses do appear, they give that tile one food and one production. And then pastures that improve horses are one of the best early game things because they get a little bit of extra production and then you can start accumulating horses to sell to the AI. It's good business. So I would always recommend going for animal husbandry first. A lot of people like to open with pottery because it unlocks the great bath for Swan King reasons. We won't worry about that just now. Although saying that, I'm going to just detour because of this particular start, I do want to put a quarry down on the stone. So I will go for mining and then we'll get the quarry, which gives me an improvement there. That'll also unlock the quarry for this marble and maybe we can put a mine down somewhere as well. We'll see. Flitting between lots of different ideas here, but they're all good. Oh, look, the barbs have appeared and the scout found me the very next turn. Ah, this always happens. But what are you going to do? Scout, keep exploring. Another tribal village. Very 
good. And look at how long this river is, the Danube. Brilliant. It's worth seeing how many different rivers you've got. I have the Vesa, the Elbe, and the Danube. So three different rivers and they all have floodplains. So I could put three different dams down on this game. That's that's amazing. This is on the Elbe. I actually think I could put another dam on this tile, in theory. Yeah, I could. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. There's a lot of dams that need to go down. Dams don't get put down for a long time, not until buttress, and they are very expensive. But three housing, one amenity, and stopping flooding, they're very handy, especially because of the way that Hamzas work. What's in this tribal village? 40 gold, and look at this. If I was to press four and have a look at the settler lens, you can see, look, something's there. What is it? It's a city-state of Cardiff, and I am not the first person to meet them, which means I do not start with an envoy. Envoys and city states give you resources. In this particular one, Cardiff is an industrial city-state, the best one for Germany. If I put one envoy in there, I'll get one production towards wonders, buildings, and districts. That will be good, but we'll see what we get later. I didn't actually see, what did I get in that tribal village? Was it just gold again? It could have been just gold again. I totally overlooked that. Well, whatever it was, I'm sure it was handy. Okay, from the beginning of the game, as soon as you settle that first city, you pick up code of laws very slowly, and this gives you your first government choices. You start as a chieftain, one military, and one economic policy. I would always go God King to unlock that first pantheon. It's just era score. That's why you normally do it. And I would go discipline for barb combat strength. Now survey is really good for scouts to level them up quicker, but by the time you've got a useful scout from leveling up, you could have done a whole host of barb killing. I would always go discipline personally. That's my personal choice. I know people do disagree with that one and that's fine. You can do that. Hunza, that is the first meet. So here we go. So I start with an envoy, which means I get two gold per turn in my capital. Amazing. And it will make my commercial hubs better later in the game. That is very handy as well. We want to keep an eye on that. Now I've got code of laws. I'm going to start work on craftsmanship. Improving three tiles when you're working on a builder immediately is a handy and easy thing to do. And this card, a gogi, means we can do something called a slinger spam. It's where you use your production to buy with 50% efficiency a load of very cheap slingers. Then you upgrade archery, unlock the archer, and for a very small gold cost, you can upgrade your slinger to a very powerful defensive unit that will stop any deity attack absolutely dead. Even if Spain were to turn up with about 700 warriors, which they might do, never discount that as a thing. It means we'll have a, a standing army that is likely to be able to at least help, at least help to blunt any attack. There's a little barbarian scout, which means there's got to be an encampment around here somewhere as well. You'll see the city-states actually fight with barbs along the map. I, that's always been a favorite touch of mine. The fact that city-states actually are like, no, I'm not going to let you you get away with this, Mr. Barb Encampment. I'm going to attack you. I love it. Independence. Okay, we're still looking for a natural wonder. Nobody's built great profits yet, but I don't want to wait too long for my holy site. So I am tempted to start on astrology and hard build it, but no, we've got other text to earn at the moment. Again, PC users, have a look at the map search and search for luxury resources. This is a very handy way of seeing the best locations to settle on the map. Two sources of marble. We've got some pearls, but I mean, apart from a lot of luxuries around my land. There's not a huge amount anywhere else and Spain being directly to my north and actually blocking a lot of the fresh water, like already that fresh water tile, that is difficult to settle on. It would mean I would have to settle on the coast, which wouldn't have as much fresh water. It's not great. So maybe I'd have to go and settle to the south. I'm just reluctant to settle this as my second city because it's got no production whatsoever. We'll keep looking. Maybe something else will pop up. I haven't discovered anything past this barb camp yet, but now that I have one settler and two Till we get a gogi, I will just work on a settler. Yeah, no, th this is okay. I, I want to get that second city out. There's got to be something decent. Going to move my scout to search from the other direction here and see see what the luxuries are. If there's something down here that's really good, it could make my settler spot entirely better. You can see we're now we're working three population, which means we're working this dodgy marsh tile again. But very soon the marble is going to unlock from culture growth. That will be a much better tile to work. Again, use the hills. Discover lots. Okay, there's nothing really here, but looking at the lens, I can settle right up against these two city-states, uh, Hunza and Cardiff, and actually work into this whole Danube area, and there are decent tiles around. There's a 1-3, some cattle, some rice, a lot of rainforest, a lot of forest to chop. This isn't too bad a spot, actually. This is a lot better as a second location than this one. So my settler will go down here unless something else appears. Spain likes the fact that I am friendly towards city-states. So weirdly, although they actually denounced me early game, they've now decided to change their mind on that. 
Very strange. Don't know. Right. The barbarians are nasty. Very, very nasty. They've already spawned barbarian horsemen. Now, this means, actually, there is a source of horse around here somewhere. I think it's within three or five tiles. So, long term, this is really good for me. Short term, really bad, because barbarian horsemen, whilst they only have 20 combat strength, they are very aggressive. Now, what I want to do is find a defensive location that they're going to attack into. Stood on a floodplain, I actually get a malice, a minus three combat strength penalty from being in floodplain. It's really bad. But if I'm on woods, I get plus three. I'm actually going to move to this tile and defend there. Oh, there's three barbarian horsemen. That is brutal. But their encampment's pretty weak. So maybe I can slip around here and attack from the other direction. Rather than getting this settler, which I think is a bit dodgy, I'm actually just going to work on a second warrior quickly. I don't want to let these barbarians overwhelm me. And having another unit to try and defend against Barcelona and Spain generally, that might not be a bad idea. Now, can the warrior actually defend here? Oh, they're all moving about. That's good. That's good. The barbs are going to have a moment. They're going to readjust. They're going to do crazy things. I'm going to fortify on this tile. That means I get combat strength if they attack me, plus three, and I'm fortified, which means I get another plus three or plus four. I can't remember exactly how much it is, but it's very powerful. Scout is going to do the same thing. The barbs will attack me on my defensive terrain. I'll do a lot more damage to them, and then I'll come and get them later. Right. We've unlocked mining. Here is a quarry, which will give me the Eureka for masonry, because I've built a quarry, and it will give plus one production to this tile, which means that I've now got a little bit more production in Munich. Amazing. We're going to go and move now to the marble. For whatever reason, the city decided to pick up this rice first. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask. It's, I'm sure it's. I'm sure it makes logical sense. But we're gonna go and oh, maybe we we'll have to buy that tile for the marble. Yeah. I'm no longer exploring. I'm actually having to deal with this bar. I'm actually the scout's really not gonna do too much here. I'm tempted to go and explore. I don't want to let the religion get away from me. Let's work astrology. This is not optimum. I would prefer. No. I'm gonna go animal husbandry first. I'll give it one more go and then I'll move my scout away. Seeing as we're making the spare warrior, I'll move my scout away. We'll go and see if we can find a natural wonder. But you're just trying to do things as optimally as you can. Now, this is not optimal. This is a barbarian horse archer. This is a ranged unit, which means it can attack me without taking any damage. If I just fortify on this tile, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose. So what I'm going to do is attack back quickly. I'm not doing a huge amount of damage. I might need to pull my warrior away and get reinforcements. Maybe the scout is going to be needed here. I really, really, really want to pull them away in order to go and explore, but these barbs need to die. No, it's really not going to do a huge amount of combat damage. So let's move the way and see if we can explore something and maybe my gold i was saving up because i had such a high gold start i was saving up to buy a settler but it might be a better idea to actually buy a warrior here that would give me three warriors a very good defensive force against spain and it would be enough to deal with these barbs worst thing you can do is under invest in your army and then find yourself being overwhelmed with barbs you know like i know people are saying who is this who is this person <laughs> ryan you always get overwhelmed by barbs i know i'm trying to make a guide i'm trying to be good yeah look at that there you go so they attacked me without repercussions there. Oh, I'm going to pull back like this and try and move this warrior in to tank any damage if the barbs do chase me. Come on, scout. Find me a natural wonder. Well, you see, look, we've already found a tribal village. So that's another era score. And irrigation is boosted. That is a really bad one. That's a really bad one because that's farmer resource. I was going to go and do that. That rice improves with the farm. Ah, so that is a pointless thing. At least we get one era score, I guess. But still, three population, a scout, a builder. All of these things would have been better. So that barb killed itself on my unit that's good i can move this warrior back to my city center to heal and i can buy this marble tile for 50 gold and i can put a quarry down and that's now a 2-1 culture tile that's really cool helps a little bit a little bit more production a little bit more culture lovely i don't want to defend on this floodplain that is really really bad oh sorry the floodplain is minus two not minus three but i'd rather fortify and have them attack me that way as i get reinforcements my warrior can pump out of my city and come to the front line really quickly now my scout has a level up. That's awesome. I'm going to move them a little bit like this and then this and I'm going to say alpine. I always prefer alpine. Faster movement on hill rather than woods and rainforest works really well because as we discovered before hills let you stand on them and hills let you reveal the map faster. So I just I just think it's really synergized and I've just noticed I pressed three for the appeal lens and I saw a plus four and then I saw an extra culture on a tile that shouldn't be there. I think this is a natural wonder. I think we're about to find one. We might get really lucky here. We'll see see how that goes the barb hopefully yep will come and attack me but i was fortified which meant i only took 15 damage compared to their 40 very handy indeed and now i've worked on this warrior i've got reinforcements my third one is healing you're healing as well this is uh, this is as defensible as 
we're going to get. Uh, let's see if my thought process on this is correct. Is this a natural wonder? It is. The Pio Pio Taui? That is difficult to say. This is a really, really cool natural wonder, actually. Provides one culture and one gold to adjacent tiles. Suddenly, this is not a bad settling location because it would give me a, it would give me whales, it would give me amber. Maybe we just go and rush down here with our settler and just go and work it as fast as we can. That's not a bad idea, you know? I mean, we don't know if anyone else is down here. This is the thing. We could send a settler ages and ages and ages and ages and then it turns out there's another AI and we get stomped. But although this is, this is a good sign. I got three era score for finding it because I am the first in the world to behold it. The first, which means the AI may not be in this area. Mm. Don't know, don't know. We'll see about this. Right, I will get the Sattler. Is anybody getting any great profit points? Spain is. Spain are definitely going to be religiously nuisancey. Yeah, let's get the Sattler out. I, I don't want to be stuck on one city for too long, ideally. And uh, yep, look. Okay, so that Barbarian Horseman killed itself attacking me. That's really good. And now I can get this warrior down. This one tanked the hit because it was fortified, but can attack back. And now I can kill that Barb Horseman and push through. I got the bronze working boost there because I killed three Barbs. Very good. There is a another horse archer. Ugh. There's a barb camp here, but one scout is not going to defeat it, so I might as well go and scout in the other direction. Let's go and see what's underneath Cardiff, shall we? Somebody has met Cardiff, so I think there's a player down in this direction. We'll, we'll see if that proves to be true. Okay, so they did attack me that, which is really annoying. I want to lure them into a trap, really. That ideally would be the perfect thing for me to do. So I'm going to pull back again, pull back again, invite them in, and then hopefully I'll have the attack to counter. I'm trying to work out if improving that rice is worth it. It would give me the craftsmanship bonus, but I'm tempted to wait on horses and hopefully like a horse appears here or, or here. So, something around me would be really handy because I'm not actually working that rice tile at the moment and I like the production for the settler. So don't think the working that rice right now would be really good. I'm going to wait for the horse and move craftsmanship to foreign trade so I get the full benefit from that boost. Okay, the barb chased me and there are barbs coming from the other direction now, which is really annoying. Really, really annoying. Um, let's switch these warriors around so that the injured one is now safe and sound in home. And then I'm going to attack over the river like that, do some damage and hopefully get the kill with the other one. Yes, perfect. Now this slinger could make my life a nuisance, but at least we've got three units now and two of them have promotions. This is looking a little better. How often is it that you see two reefs that would make a nice plus four campus that is blocked by marble? Ugh, or stone. Oh no, not even stone. Just something you can't remove. A luxury, a strategic, something like that. Okay, the oh, slinger just moved in. That's a second barbarian outpost. This is a real problem for us. So it's actually a good thing that I kept hold of this builder because this marble is about to get pillaged annoyingly. You heal. You, I'm going to get the battle cry promotion, which is plus seven against ranged and melee troops. Makes a huge difference. And this warrior, I'm going to move out of the floodplain and then give battle cry. So you can see now this warrior has plus five from barbarians. That's my government. And then plus seven from battle cry. Makes a huge difference. I didn't see any horses though. Where are the horses? Oh, there is some there and some in that oh, mysterious place I really wanted to go and settle that Spain keeps settling towards, which is going to make that very difficult. But I could go and steal that horse. I don't know. There's no horses amongst anything below me. We got quite unlucky that. No horses in this whole area. What, what are you going to do? But another reason to settle this city, actually. No housing, but it would have instant access to horses and stone and yeah, we'd have to give it some housing, but, but that wouldn't be bad. Here is the other person. Green and white. I think that's Zulu, which is a very aggressive sieve, but they generally make good allies. They're kind of, they're straight up with you. They come to you and they're like, we're going to kill you, but we're pretty straight up with that. And you go, oh, thanks, Zuli. I, I appreciate the honesty. Oh, that warrior just got totally ganged up on that. That was not polite at all. I'm going to have to be very careful. I don't want to lose this warrior. It's very promoted. It's very happy, but this slinger is going to chase it probably. So I'm going to have to move you away and then to here and hope the barbs don't chase you. That's the idea. We'll let this warrior have one more turn of healing. Let the settler pop out and then, yeah, you know what? I might have to go and settle there just to make a bit of defense against barbarians. This is crazy how many have appeared in this early stages of the game. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. Right, we're going to get pottery, try and unlock the great bath. And now we've unlocked our first wonder. It's not very useful right now because Ludwig, the reason why people love Ludwig, Swan King. Wonders, even if not finished, receive two culture for every adjacent district. 
That is not specialty district, that is just district. This culture is displayed in the city yields, aka if you click on a city it'll be in the yields, it'll show there. It actually shows if you press 9, 9 on the keyboard for the empire lands. Any district will show you its adjacency and the wonder will show you how much culture it's getting then. But it needs to be next to a district. All culture adjacencies provide tourism while discovering castles. That's something for later in the game. But right now you can see if I was to place Stonehenge I can only place it on these two tiles which not only have I got to spend 80 gold on but they're not next to any district so it wouldn't give me any culture which is a bit annoying. All right let's go and meet Zulu. Yay it was Zulu we guessed right. Honor to meet you. Love to sample your hospitality. Excellent. Now this is where hopefully we can turbocharge our economy. Zulu has amber but no other luxuries. So do you want to buy my marble? Yes. Do you want to buy my chocolate? Yes. Right now my city has plus two amenities so I can actually afford to get rid of them and if I sell I'll get a hundred gold up front and six gold per turn. That's really good. Right now gold is worth a lot more than a little bit of happiness in my cities especially because this marble is about to get pillaged which means I won't be able to sell it. I'll just declare friendship. Sometimes sometimes it works like Gilgamesh, Saivia, both of those people tend to accept a friendship request like that. It looks also like Zulu have desert between me and them so I'm hoping they're less likely to want to come and settle towards me but that could be wishful thinking. And finally a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Diebel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, MTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, thank you everyone for your support, see you all in the next video, goodbye!